All right, so I'm Andres. I uh, work with Tailwind. Um, I don't know if you can see this. It's not very good, but let me switch to Chrome. So I want to talk about Rust. I'm just going to spend uh, very little time on it. Uh, I'm originally a Java developer. I spent uh, about 20 years writing Java, and then I joined a new company, and we were doing PHP, and I felt like I went backwards <coughs> at least uh, 15 years of my life, uh, not enjoying it. And so fortunately there was, um, I overcame that by the way, uh, since then, thanks to some, uh, some good tools that we have. But um, one of the things that we also use at Tailwind is Rust and it's a programming language that is fairly new, has been around for a few years and I just wanted to mention a few things. So um, if you go and Google Rust, you'll find this awesome page. It's a, a language that, um, um, it's mostly a systems language and it has three pillars that it tries to tackle and it's very explicit about the decisions and the language specification and what it tries to do and it at, what it attempts not to do. So it focuses mostly on performance, reliability and productivity. You can read all about it, but um, I figured that I at least will tell you a little bit of what um, I find it's uh, very notable about it. Um, number one is that um, documentation is a first-class citizen. Everything there is is extremely well documented. They have a book uh, with the language. So if you look at here, um, this is produced uh, for every build pretty much, and it has pretty much everything there is in the language is in this one book. You don't have to go search all over the internet or all, all over the place, and I felt uh, as a, somebody who was new to the, to the language, learning it, it made it uh, way easier, and it's really good that it's like that's by design, it's um, a first class citizen, uh, the documentation. If you like uh, strongly typed languages, it's very similar to Java in that regard. Um, you have generics too, which is really helpful when you're dealing with collections. So strongly typed, uh, statically typed. Um, the one thing that I felt was a really good upgrade from uh, Java uh, at least, uh, or from other languages um, that are strongly typed, but is that immutability, it's a first class citizen, you know for a fact, at compile time, whether a variable uh, can be mutated or not, um, by default everything is immutable, uh, and if you have to mutate things, you can trace exactly all the places where that is allowed, and you cannot perform certain operations in terms of mutating a, a variable, um, unless that's a legitimate operation. So I felt like that was also, when I had considered in the past, um, functional languages which kind of force immutability by design on you, um, I felt this strikes, uh, you know, and other languages that don't enforce it at all, I think this, um, that Rust strikes the kind of perfect balance because it's immutable by default, that's a good thing, but if you need to mutate things, then you can be very explicit and know about it, so I felt like it strikes a, a really good balance. It, it is, a, in a way, not a pure functional language in the sense that everything is functional, but it does have functional um, uh, concepts, uh, closures, you can do iterator maps, um, the other nice, re really nice thing is, um, again, having dealt with Java and having built a lot of um, you know, multi-threaded um, parallel uh, operations, uh, this guarantees safety. Uh, so there's, in Java, this whole array of concepts on how to deal with thread safety and you know, when you're doing things in parallel, make sure that like, you're not gonna introduce uh, problems, but in Rust, that is a problem that they tackle at the compiler level. So the compiler itself will not allow you to do something that is inherently thread not safe or not thread safe, which uh, it's a big plus. Uh, two very extremely important, uh, this, uh, there's talks that call it a billion dollar um, mistake, so there's no null, no null pointers uh, possibly allowed um, uh, in the language, so you have the, very similar to other languages, the concept of an optional value can be there, can be present or not, but it's never null, and no throwables. You cannot throw things back at the stack like you would see in JavaScript or Java. Basically, every operation you have a result, and the result can contain a value or can contain an exception, but there's no throwing back at the stack and having to catch it forever until you, you know, finally handle it or do something with it. 10 seconds. Um, code generation is first class citizen and they have an integrated also package, uh, manager, build, all the, and test integrated. So a lot of really good things. You can go check it out. It's an awesome language. Thank you. Ooh. Ooh.